Dr. Zeus's Gertrude McFuzz. There once was a girl bird named Gertrude McFuzz, and she had the smallest plain tail ever was. One droopy droop feather, that's all she had. And oh, that one feather made Gertrude so sad. For there was another young bird that she knew, a fancy young birdie named Lola Lilu. And instead of one feather behind, she had two. Poor Gertrude. Whenever she happened to spy Miss Lola Lilu flying by in the sky, she got very jealous. She frowned and she pouted. Then one day she got awfully mad and she shouted. This just isn't fair. I have one. She has two. I must have a tail just like Lola Lilu. So she flew to her uncle, a doctor named Dake, whose office was high in a tree by the lake. And she cried, Uncle Doctor, oh please do you know, of some kind of pill that will make my tail grow? Tut, tut, said the doctor. Such talk, how absurd. Your tail is just right for your kind of bird. Then Gertrude had tantrums. She raised such a din that finally her uncle, the doctor, gave in. And he told her just where she could find such a pill on a pillberry vine at the top of the hill. Oh, thank you, chirped Gertrude McFuzz, and she flew right straight to the hill where the pillberry grew. Yes, there was the vine, and as soon as she saw it, she plucked off a berry, she started to gnaw it. It tasted just awful, almost made her sick, but she wanted that tail, so she swallowed it quick. Then she felt something happen. She felt a small twitch, as if she'd been tapped down behind by a switch. And Gertrude looked round, and she cheered. It was true. Two feathers, exactly like Lol Lilu. Then she got an idea. Now I know what I'll do. I'll grow a tail better than Lol Lilu. These pills that grow feathers are working just fine. So she nibbled another one off of the vine. She felt a new twitch, and then Gertrude yelled, Wee! Miss Lola has only just two. I have three. When Lola Lilu sees this beautiful stuff, she'll fall right down flat on her face, sure enough. I'll show her who's pretty. I certainly will. Why, I'll make my tail even prettier still. She snatched at those berries that grew on that vine. She gobbled down four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And she didn't stop eating, young Gertrude McFuzz, till she'd eaten three dozen. That's all there was. Then the feathers popped out with a zang, with a zing. They blossomed like flowers that bloom in the spring. All fit for a queen, what a sight to behold. They sparkled like diamonds and gumdrops and gold. Like silk, like spaghetti, like satin, like lace. They burst out like rockets all over the place. They waved in the air and they swished in the breeze. And some were as long as the branches of trees. And still they crept growing. They popped and they popped until long about sundown when finally they stopped. And now, giggled Gertrude, the next thing to do is to fly right straight home and show Lola Lilu. And when Lola sees these, why her face will get red and she'll let out a scream and she'll fall right down dead. Then she spread out her wings to take off from the ground. But with all of those feathers, she weighed 90 pound. She yanked and she pulled and she let out a squawk. But that bird couldn't fly couldn't run, couldn't walk. And all through that night, she was stuck on that hill. And Gertrude McFuzz might be stuck up there still. If her good uncle Dake hadn't heard the girl yelp, he rushed to her rescue and brought along help. To lift Gertrude up almost broke all their beaks. And to fly her back home, it took almost two weeks. And then it took almost another week more to pull out those feathers. My Gertrude was sore. 
And finally, when all of the pulling was done, Gertrude behind her again had just one, that one little feather she had as a starter. But now that's enough because now she is smarter.